You've got a car in the bay with a DSP to get installed. You have all the tools. What now? Don't get scared. I'll go over it after the intro. How's it going everyone? My name is Dan and today we get to install a DSP. Are you as excited as I am? This is our third video in our DSP series, so if you have not seen the previous videos yet, check the link down in the description so you can get all caught up. Now before we get out into the bay and get to work on the car, let's go ahead and have a little refresher on some of the terms you're going to hear in this video. First off, polarity or phase. Uh, this is the direction that a speaker is playing. So in phase means the speaker is playing forward. Out of phase means the speaker is playing backwards. That's what happens when you flip the positive and negative speaker wires. Clipping is a form of waveform distortion that occurs when an amplifier is overdriven and attempts to deliver an output voltage or current beyond its maximum capability. This is also sometimes called distortion. You test for clipping using sine waves, which are a sound clip of a single frequency, like my favorite sound, 1000 Hz. Full range or frequency range is the sound that we can hear. This is measured between 20 Hz and 20,000 Hz. Pink noise is simply a noise that plays across the frequency range at equal levels at each octave. These are the frequencies that you can see in the EQ or in your DSP software. For example, this is a 31 band EQ, that 31 bands that's each octave. So pink noise will play at each one of these frequencies that you see. Now, don't get that confused with white noise. White noise is equal noise at, a, at an equal level across every frequency. And the way you'll know the difference when you hear them, pink noise kind of sounds like a normal static. White noise is a very high pitched static. Passive crossovers are something you're probably already familiar with. They separate the frequencies needed for each speaker. They require no external power and no extra amp channels, but they are limited when it comes to tuning. However, active crossovers separate the frequencies in the DSP, so no external crossover is needed. This does require an extra amp channel per speaker, but it does give you way more flexibility when it comes to tuning. Summing is when you take two or more channels together to make a full range signal. You're going to be seeing an example of that later. All right, with that out of the way, let's uh, go over the plan for today. We have a 2020 Subaru Legacy with the HK system in it. We're going to be integrating the Alpine PXE 0850X after the factory amp, and we're going to show you how. All right, let's head out to the install bay. Okay, so we have the car in the bay, and the first thing we want to do is we want to make sure that everything in the system is already working. So you'll want to listen to it, make sure that every speaker is playing. It also gets you familiar with the car, so you know what speakers are where, what is all in here. Is it an amplified system? Is there a factory subwoofer? Is there a center channel? In this case, there is a center channel. There are some dash speakers. There are some door speakers and there is a subwoofer on the rear deck. So we want to keep all that stuff in mind when we're measuring our signals to make sure that we're finding every speaker that is in the car. So we're also going to look around, see what other features are in here. Are there backup sensors? Do those backup sensors play sounds through the speakers when you're using them? Luckily in this car they don't, but if you run into that you might need to keep that in mind. You might need to keep those channels going. This car actually has an SOS feature here, which is kind of like OnStar if you're more familiar with that. So what do we need to do to maintain that? Now in this car, I actually know that it's another module that's behind the screen here. But for today's demonstration, we'll just keep it at the amplifier. But there's something just to keep in mind. Um, another thing we need to look for navigation bluetooth does it car play all that all those features so does it have it this car does what does it do when you're using it does the navigation prompts do they only come through the center channel does the bluetooth only come through the center channel if it does then you're going to need to make sure to keep that channel alive or at least mix it into the to the uh, dsp so you can keep hearing it luckily for us in this car the center channel doesn't do that much all the sounds that we that coming from here as far as navigation bluetooth all that stuff it is coming through our front left and right dash speakers so we're just going to be using those and then going from there another thing to keep in mind whenever you're doing anything like this when you're measuring oem signals doing dsp tuning you're going to leave the car on for a good amount of time so if you're in a bay like i am right now you don't want to have the engine running so we do have a battery charger or maintainer anything like that you want to have that hooked up on the battery and just keep it on 
That way your car battery doesn't die because that's the last thing you want to happen. So the first thing we're going to do is I'm going to use a Sheffield Lab disc on my phone and I'm going to play the Polarity Pulse track, which if you're curious, it sounds like this. It's my second favorite song. And we're going to use our phase checker and we're going to go around the car at each speaker grill and we're going to test the phase of each speaker. Now, when, it's, when you're playing these tracks, you're going to get three pops in phase and one out. So that should be three greens and one red. Now, if you find yourself getting all three reds and one green, if you have that on the same left and right sides, that's okay. Sometimes it does register that way, but uh, you are looking for three of one color and then one of the other. Cool. So now we're good there. Uh, looks like everything is in phase in this car, so we don't have to worry about any kind of phasing issues. So the next step is to uh, go ahead and get to the factory amplifier, which in this case is underneath the passenger seat. And uh, we're going to get the RTA hooked up to the speaker wires on the output, and we're going to go ahead and start measuring signals. Okay, so we are at the factory amplifier here. I've already uh, unbolted the, the uh, passenger seat as well as the amplifier to give it a little more room. Uh, I have the seat still plugged in. You're going to want to make sure to do this, especially on a newer car, because a lot of these do have airbag sensors. And if you turn on the car without a seat plugged in, you could got, cause some air lights to pop up on the dash. So we're going to avoid that problem by just leaving everything plugged in. Um, I also, as you can see down here, I do have a T harness that I'm using to uh, make it a lot easier to test the wiring uh, from the factory amplifier. Now, if you do something like this and you do have access to a T harness, it will make your life a lot easier. It's also going to make your install a lot nicer because you don't have to splice in any factory wiring. You can just plug it in. Uh, if you do this and you're testing, make sure you plug this into the harness in because the power does come through it. Ask me how I know. We're going to, we already have our eight channels uh, that correspond to the factory speaker wires. We have them out here. I have the ends taped up so I don't have to worry about any kind of shorts. And we have our DMRTA here and I went ahead and put some alligator clamps on the uh, speaker level input to make it a lot easier for when I'm testing. And I also have my uh, wire probe, it's right here. And uh, so we're good to go. So the first step is we want to make sure that all the settings on the factory radio are flat. So first off, we wanna make sure that uh, all the bass, mid, treble, any kind of possible sound enhancements, all that stuff is on flat or zero or off. Uh, we don't want to be trying to RTA this thing and the bass is boosted all the way, which uh, it's probably a good chance that has happened. So let's go ahead and make sure everything is at zero. And then we'll go over to balance and fade and make sure that it's all in the center of the car. That way all the speakers are playing equally. So we're good there. Uh, I'm also gonna just double check the volume to make sure that we're around half. And yeah, 20 is about halfway, so we'll leave it there. Now I have my phone connected through Bluetooth, so uh, we are going to uh, go into the uh, Educar app and we're gonna play the mono pink noise, which is just the M button right here. So that is now playing pink noise. And we're gonna go through and start probing each uh, channel on here and we're gonna look at the RTA to see what it's doing. And then we're gonna notate everything on our notepad. So let's begin. Now, if you are testing all this and you don't see anything, there is a chance that your factory amplifier is uh, class D and has a feature in it that actually mutes channels when there's no load detected. And if you do run into that, you're gonna have to install load resistors. Now here's a load resistor right here. A lot of them come in like 33 ohm, 47 ohm, but uh, they're rated about 10 watts, sometimes 15, 20. Uh, they're also known as ceramic resistors. You do have to get these and apply them across the positive and negative. That will actually put a load on the amplifier to make it think there's a speaker plugged in and then you can continue on and you will need to install those on every channel uh, before the uh, processor. So we're gonna hopefully not need these, but I have one here for testing just in case. Okay, so we are connected and I'm actually already starting to see something on the RTA here. It's a little low, so let's turn the volume up on the radio. And it looks like we have signal. So uh, this uh, 
it's pretty low right here, but uh, we're gonna figure out what speaker this is. So I'm gonna go over to the balance and fade, and we're gonna go to the front. And I noticed that went away. So let's go to the rear. And there it is. So it's uh, one of the rear speakers. So let's figure out if it's left or right. So we'll go all the way left. And it's gone. We'll go all the way right. And there it is. So we can actually see that we have a rear speaker. It is, I know it's low on the signal, but that's okay. It's a uh, pretty much full range. So we're gonna go ahead and notate that this first pair here, and I'm just writing these in order, uh, is it was right rear full range. All right, let's move on to the next one. Now remember, we still haven't put our uh, radio back in center, so we might not see anything at first. All right, let's put it on center. And we have something. I bet you this will be the rear left. Let's find out. Yep, looks like it is. Let's just verify that. Yep. Okay. So, rear left. Full range. All right, next pair. We should be finding a front speaker now. All right, so we are now in the next pair. And we can see that there is no low end on the... Uh, and the bass, so this tells me this is probably one of the dash speakers since it's kind of a mid tweet. So let's go ahead and verify that. We go all the way to the front, still playing. Check front right, it's gone. Front left, it's there. That is a front left dash speaker. Front left, I'll put TM for tweet mid. And then that is going to be about, oh, I would say starting at around 400 hertz and up. And I, you can see there's a lot of EQ done from the factory. There's a lot more on the high end than the mid range. So uh, I'm going to put 400 and uh, uh, up to 20K. All right, let's check the next one. Ooh, look at that. That's a lot, a lot of bass there. So that might be one of the door uh, woofers. Let's find out. Check front right, still there. Front left, going away. Yep, so that is a front right door woofer. We can see there's a lot more power going to it because it is a little more off the scale here. So this will be the front right woofer. And I'm gonna say that's probably playing like 40 to, you know, let's find out. It's like 40 to 200 ish. Let's check the next one. All right, this looks pretty similar. I bet you this is the other door woofer. So let's find out. Yep, front left, front right's gone. There you go. So that will be the front left door woofer. Same frequency range. Okay, so we have a lower signal here, so let's scale it differently. Now it looks a little different than what we saw before, so let's figure out what channel this is. We go all the way front left, and it goes away. Front right, it goes away. Went the rear, to go, rear left, it goes away. Rear right, it goes away. So it's only there when I'm in the center. That tells me it's center channel. We'll just call it full, even though it's missing a lot of bass. We're not even going to be using it anyway. All right, getting down to the home stretch here. Oh, okay. This looks like we have our other dash speaker, so let's just verify that. We already did find the uh, the left one, so let's see if this is the right one. Indeed, it is. So front. Right tweeter mid. All right, last one. I have a feeling this is probably going to be the subwoofer. Gee, how did I know? That is a sub. And it is probably on like a 60 hertz ish crossover or low pass. 
So we'll put a 60 LPF low pass filter. And we're good. Uh, you can also go through here and just make sure if you go to like to the left, yeah, it's still kind of there. To the right, it's still there. It's probably summing left and right together to make that signal. So yeah, there you go. So there's your sub. And uh, so now we have figured out all of our speakers, where they are in this harness. We've also now figured out the frequency range that all of our speakers are playing. And we have noticed other than the rear speakers, since we're only gonna be doing fronts in this system, uh, we need to sum it. Um, we also need to make sure we're using the front signals because during our testing earlier, the navigation prompts, CarPlay, Bluetooth, all that stuff does come out of the front speakers. So we're going to sum those when we get into the processor. But before we do that, we got to figure out where this factory amplifier clips. So that'll be our next step. Okay, clipping. So we are still plugged into the factory sub. There's no point in changing it around. So we'll just go ahead and start on sub. Now we're going to stop playing our pink noise track and we're going to play a 40 hertz sine wave since we know that 40 hertz is actually in the uh, range that the subwoofer plays. Now another little free app you can grab, it's called Signal, uh, t signal Generator. So you can actually generate a sine wave at any frequency at any level and it's free. So pretty handy to have. So we're going to do 40 hertz and we are have the volume up at zero and we're going to go ahead and let it play. And when we look at our scope here, we can see that we are probably clipping this thing. So let's go ahead and turn the radio volume down because we do have it up pretty high. Okay, so we're seeing a little bit more there. Let's go ahead and uh, change the width of this so we can see a little better. Perfect. So what you're seeing there is a nice round sine wave at 40 hertz. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna move the volume. Right now we're at nine. We're gonna go up. Now, that might you might think that's clipping, but we're actually going off the scale here. So let's go ahead and just go up here. We're actually gonna go ahead and go to five. So we're gonna, because we're pretty low on the volume. So we're gonna keep going up on the volume. And whenever every, every click you go, you can see it grow. And you can also see that we are, our voltage is going up. So we're up here, and one thing we're noticing is I'm uh, I'm only at let's see here volume twenty right here twenty one it grows twenty two it doesn't and we keep kind of keep going on the volume numbers and it's not really growing anymore. Let's keep going. Let's just see what happens here. It is not clipping. You know what that is? That is a base roll off. So what happens here is the factory sub does not get any louder after volume 22. So I'm going to leave it on 22. We'll go over to the voltmeter and just see what kind of voltage we're getting, RMS. And we're around three volts, three and a half maybe tops. We're well below 10 volts on the maximum that our processor can handle. So we're totally good. And this is probably going to be one of the, uh, the highest channels in voltage. So we're totally good to use the A50X uh, high level end. So we'll leave it on scope. And we also know that there's really nothing we can do about the base roll off, uh, but we're gonna see what the other channels do and see what kind of volume they just sort at. So I'll leave it at 22. And I'm also gonna write that the max volume on the sub was 22. And I'm also gonna put no clipping. And let's check one of the, uh, Let's go to one of the uh, door woofers and see what that's doing. Okay, so we're hooked up to one of the door woofers and we're going to change our frequency since 40 hertz is a little lower than what it can play. I'm going to move it up to 100 or about 100. And uh, actually, I'll tell you what, we'll go up to, we'll, we'll, do, uh, we'll do like 135. So I'm going to let that play. And as you can see, we're still at volume 22 on the radio. We are clean. So. Let's go ahead and start turning the volume up and see what happens. You can see it is growing a little bit when I go volume up. Still going, still going, still going. But it is starting to act a little wonky there, so let's back it up. 
And that is at volume 32. And it still looks kind of funny, so let's go back down to 31. Yeah, see, that's a little more smooth and a little more consistent. So I like volume 31. And we also did notice that it did not square wave. There's something in the, this amplifier that is just allowing it to not do that. So that's, that's cool. We actually don't have to worry about it. But we also want to make sure that we're getting the cleanest signal out of this that we can. All right, so we're going to notate that volume 32 is the maximum. No clipping. Now, if you do find clipping, that's when it'll square off on the top and bottom. If that happens, then back down one, click on the volume, and that will be your maximum, okay? So, we're going to stop that tone. And now we'll adjust one of the dash speakers. And we're not going to worry about rear speakers because we're not using them in this install, but the same process applies there. Same thing that we're going to be doing on the uh, dash speakers. All right, so the dash speakers, if you remember on the RTA, there was a big bump at the, at the yeah, high end. So I want to play a frequency that was up there. That way we know what the maximum is. So let's try something real high, like 8,000 hertz. That's going to look kind of weird on, our, on, this arc, on the scope because it's real small. But we can see that it is still not clipping. And we're also still at volume 32 on the radio. Let's try a lower frequency. Let's keep going up. We can see the voltage is really not climbing. Oh, oh there it is. A little bit. Well, while I go up in the frequency. But we are definitely not distorting. But we do know that we don't want to go beyond this volume because on the door woofer it was acting a little weird. So we're going to go ahead and say that at volume 32, we're good. Now, we might have a little bit less bass from the sub, but we still have a lot coming from these doors. So let's just double check our voltage here. Pretty low. A lot lower than you would think, right? That's actually the RMS voltage. So um, we can also see on the scale here that we are barely topping 5 volts. So we're good. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and stop playing that. I'm going to write down that we're going to keep the max at 32, no clipping. So what we know from this is whenever we're setting our amp gains, uh, after we set up the processor, is that we want to have the radio set to 32. Now, uh, that's going to be the new maximum volume that we recommend for the radio. Now, what's going to happen beyond that, you might get a little bit of distortion, but, we want it, but that's actually pretty close to the top end of this radio. So we're actually getting to utilize a lot of the volume scale, so it's not too bad. All right, perfect. So the next step before we undo anything is we're going to turn the volume down on the radio. It's always a safe bet to make sure your volume is at zero whenever you're about to disconnect anything or change anything or turn the car off because you don't want it to start blasting in case you happen to hook a speaker back up or anything. So we're good here. We actually now know the distortion point and frequency ranges of all of our speakers. So we do know that we are going to need to sum the dash speakers to the door woofers. And we're going to go ahead and uh, sum in the factory sub into the signal as well. That way we get a little more low end. And we'll actually be able to let that subwoofer signal pass through to our aftermarket sub. And we can even blend in the door speaker woofers into the factory, into the sub signal to get a little more out of it. So uh, we're going to go ahead and I'm going to wire up the high level input harness on the OA50X to the speaker output to this amplifier. And I'm gonna go ahead and just pow grab power and ground from this harness here. Just to let you guys know, I'm actually not installing a full system in here right now, but I'm gonna go ahead and hook the DSP up to this amplifier. And we're gonna be able to look and see what it's doing. And we're gonna get it all set up to the point to where all you have to do beyond that is just set your amp gains and tune the system. So let's go ahead and I'm gonna get the harness wired up and we'll be back in here with it plugged in. And we're going to go over how to set up the processor and set up the mixer. Okay, so we have our DSP wired up to the factory amplifier. So the way that I did the channel mapping is something that we're going to keep in mind throughout the rest of the install, which is something I really do recommend. And uh, is to know what channel number you have going where, and also to make them all line up as much as you can. So what I did here was I made channel 1 the front left tweeter, channel 2 the front right tweeter, Channel three, the front door woofer, channel four, 
the fr uh, front right door woofer, and then channel five is the subwoofer. Now I generally start with the front left up high, like where the tweeter is, make that my first number, and then work my way down and back throughout the car, making sure that all the odd numbers are the left side and even numbers are the right side. So what we're gonna do is keep that in mind when we do our system on the output. So the way we're gonna set up the DSP today is we're gonna assume that we're doing a two-way active system. So it'll be two tweeters, two woofers, and then a subwoofer, so five channels. And you can actually do that just on a five channel amplifier. So that's why, pretty common system. So we're gonna go ahead and set that up today. So the way we're gonna do that is we're gonna set up the channel mapping the same way as we did before. One, two, three, four, and then five on the sub. So uh, we're gonna go ahead and get connected to the DSP. We already have it turned on. I already have the car on. And uh, I'm gonna go ahead and just let the factory radio play pink noise again. Perfect. So. And I just have it at about volume 20. I uh, just don't need to have it up uh, at the maximum undistorted level. So we have the we already have the USB cable here. And I'm gonna be using the laptop uh, software so it's easy to, for me to record it so you guys can see. When we plug into an 850X, uh, or actually any Alpine DSP, you want the part with the pigtail for the controller, you want that towards your computer. If you do it the other way around, you might have some problems connecting. So just make sure you uh, are aware of that. So we'll plug in and you can see that we are already connected in the software. So you can see the green light. So looking at the software here, we're going to take a look at the left side. That's all actually all of our channel outputs. Now we can see it's already populated with a bunch of stuff, but none of that is what we're going to be using today. So we're going to save ourselves a lot of time instead of clearing all these out manually. We're just going to hit the clear, the reset button down here and we're going to clear it out. Now, if you hit default, it's just going to put it back to where it was. But if we hit clear, it'll actually nullify all those channels. So we're gonna go ahead and based on what we talked about before with what channel numbers are gonna wear, we're gonna make channel one, the front left tweeter or treble. And you'll see they're already made channel two, the front right. So that's perfect. So we'll go down to channel three. That'll be the front left mid bass driver. And you see it already made channel four, the right. And then uh, channels five and six, we'll make both of those subs. So we'll make channel five sub L subwoofer and you can see the right subwoofer is already populated on channel six. So perfect, we're already done. So with the output uh, mapping. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna look up here at main source and we're gonna make sure that we have high level selected because we are using the high level input. So we can see that we are, so we're good. Now we're gonna go ahead and go over to option and take a look at the mix settings because we wanna make uh, sure the inputs here match up uh, to the output. So uh, by now by default if you see it on passive that means that we have a full range signal going in so you can see we only have 100 percent of channel one going out to the left side 100 percent of channel two going out to the right side so what we're going to do since the factory amplifier was active since we did have higher frequencies come to the dash and lower frequencies going to the doors that is an active system so we're going to click active and it's going to enable all of the high level inputs perfect so we can see here that it actually went ahead and did a default summing for us. So it said, hey, uh, channel one high level in, which is the front left uh, tweeter mid uh, from the factory amplifier. Think of it this way, all these high level channels here, that is coming from the factory amp. And then all the channels down here across the bottom are the outputs going to our aftermarket system. So whatever we want coming from uh, to out to a channel, we put 100% or whatever percentage you need it to be from the input. So. We're gonna walk through this. Channel one on the output is also gonna be our front and left tweeter. And we wanna make sure we have at least all the frequencies from for the tweeter. So if we remember before, we actually had about what, 400 Hertz and up uh, on the uh, factory uh, uh, channel. So that means that actually that's everything we would ever need to play a tweeter. So we can actually go through here and, and, actually, and delete and uh, zero out the other, the other uh, inputs because we don't need bass playing through a, a tweeter. And uh, so I actually made that one, here we go. Perfect. So we're good there and we can actually go ahead and take a look and see what that looks like on the RTA. So I'm gonna plug, uh, we're using a low level end now. So we're gonna plug it into channel one and we can see on the RTA here that we are playing the frequencies that we need for a tweeter. So perfect. So 
Let's go ahead and we'll do the same for the front and right tweeter, but we're going to do it from high level two because that's the right side. And we're going to go ahead and just clear out these channels. Perfect. And we can go ahead and verify that. Just plug it into channel two. Yep. Great. So now we're going to go over to channel three. You see we're all over the place there, but that's okay. So we'll look at channel three. Now we know that the door woofer is going to need to play a little higher than what the factory woofer did since we're doing a two-way system. So we're going to leave the higher frequencies in there. We're also going to leave, of course, the door woofer frequencies coming from the input. Now one thing we don't really need in there is we don't need the subwoofer playing uh, into that input. So I'm going to delete that out. And as you can see, we actually do have a nice roll off. Now there's going to be a lot of bass in there. If it's a little too punchy whenever you're tuning, here's a little trick. We'll go to the input on the uh, door woofer and we can make it 50% of that signal. And as you can see, it is actually much more manageable. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and leave it at 100 because I want all of the output I can get. But, no, but it's good to know that we have that available to us if we need to. So that's perfect. So let's go ahead and we'll just go ahead and do the same thing to uh, the, the next woofer, which uh, we're gonna take out that sub signal. We actually don't have anything hooked up to high level six, so we can really just get rid of all of those. I'm gonna go ahead and do that now. Perfect. Okay, so channel five is the subwoofer out. Now subwoofer, we definitely don't need anything coming from the dash speakers because the uh, subwoofer's not gonna be playing high frequencies. So we're gonna go ahead and take a look at that output on the DSP and we can see that it is already playing sub. So, and the reason why is because there's already a crossover enabled whenever we uh, identified that channel. So I'm gonna go ahead and delete the sub, uh, the uh, high frequencies out of that uh, output. And I am going to actually leave the, uh, some of the door woofer uh, signal in there. That way they can go up a little bit higher. So we need to get a little more out of that subwoofer. So I don't want 100% of both left and right. I want to combine the two. So what I'm going to do, since half of 100 is 50, we want 50% of left and then 50% of right. And as you can see now we're, and we'll leave 100% of that sub signal. And if you guys want to see what it looks like if I take the sub out, you can see a lot of that goes away. So we're gonna wanna leave that in there. So I like that output, so we're gonna do the exact same thing with uh, the channel six out. Perfect. So we can actually go ahead and just plug into channel six to make sure that looks the same. And it does. So we are good. Uh, so now the next step, well, I'm going to go ahead and just plug it back into the front tweeter. And we know now that we're good on the mixer. And then at this point, you can go through and set whatever crossovers you want. Now that's going to really vary on what speakers you're doing and everything. But by default, we give you 5,000 hertz at a 12 dB slope. Uh, that's, uh, we're not going to be going over a lot of that stuff today. That's more of a tuning topic. Maybe that's for another day. So we can see here that we are good to go. Uh, we have all of our outputs set, our input mixer set, we're good to go. I also like to leave, depending on if you're gonna be using the factory radio volume, you can leave the volume turned up in the DSP. Now the controller also does have volume on there as well. So we're gonna be uh, leaving that alone. And what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to save this. So up over here in the preset, we're gonna hit preset one. And you can see that we've already been messing with this DSP a little bit. So we're gonna call, we'll make this preset one and I'm going to call this one test and hit store. And what that does is it writes everything that we just did today. It actually writes that to the internal memory of the DSP. So if you lose power or anything, it's actually going to be stored and remembered in there. Okay, so now that you're all set up, the next thing you're going to want to do is uh, if you have your amplifiers hooked up and your speakers hooked up, go ahead and plug everything in. And you're going to want to go through and test everything. You want to make sure that all your channels are playing the correct thing they should be playing. Go through your balance and fade settings on your radio. Make sure they're doing what they should. And also you can check the channel outputs on your DSP. You can mute each channel output. Make sure you have all of those going to the correct places too. If you end up finding that you have two speakers flipped 
uh, then you could have a lot of problems uh, tuning the car. Ask me how I know. And the other thing you're going to want to do is grab that face checker again, like we did at the beginning. Go around and double check everything. Make sure you hook everything up correctly and give it another test. It only takes about a minute or two and it can save you a lot of headache down the road if you end up having the speaker out of phase while you're tuning. So go ahead and just do that and uh, then you're pretty much set to go. That's pretty much it, guys. That wasn't so bad, was it? Having a plan and going over the order of operations while installing a DSP can really make it not that difficult. Now that we've done the install, the real fun can begin. Tuning. We won't be going over tuning in this video, but stay tuned. Pun intended. Hey, if this video was helpful, please smash that like button and don't forget to make sure you're subscribed to the Alpine TV YouTube channel. Once again, my name is Dan and we'll see you in the next video.